Feast of Tabernacles, what Yahweh's feasts mean to you. This is part four of day four. This is the fourth day of, in, in this uh, feast. Now today, what are we going to look out from the covenant book? What is the things that we supposed to stick to? Number one, going to look at Israel's desire to rebel against Yahweh. Like we read in the book of Ezekiel and uh, Hosea, it is clearly stated that Israelites, you know, had their hearts after Baal, Baal worship, which is Lord God worship. Number two, we are going to look at promises of Yahweh to restore his people, both Israelites and the Gentiles that will be grafted into the family of Israel. It's like a continuation of what we've been doing. Number three, we are going to look at further instructions which Yahweh is issuing to his people that they should keep his law and commandments. So all we are going to do is to use the Bible references or Bible chapters and verses to support all we are saying. So because it's not human teaching, it's not at the end of the day, the authority is Yahweh's, and that authority comes from his word, his you know, covenant law or Torah. In part four of the four yesterday, which was yesterday, we examine in parts the warnings to always watch and pray for escape. Yahweh is talking about how would you escape? Now, this is the way you will escape. This is what and what you should be doing in order to escape. So this Feast of Tabernacles is a call for us to prepare ourselves to escape what is coming. Because what is coming is beyond human comprehension. It's a warning that we should always watch. That's what issue that warning. Yahweh also issued that warning. We should always watch, continue to watch, and pray for our escape. So let's retreat on Yahweh's promise to escape, as you know, we've been carrying it out to showcase what they are. There are direct promises made to all of Yahweh's people in these last days. Promises that have never been made to any other set of people in the history of Yahweh's people, Israel. These precious promises are only to those who have faith in Yahshua Messiah and who remain faithful, obedient to the Father in those in observing, in observing and keeping his laws and instructions. These are those. These are those who are truly involved in Yahweh's work of evangelism, those who are creating awareness to his people, that is, the dry bones. Israelites are looked at or seen as dry bones in these latter days, according to Ezekiel 37, 1 to 14. That's how Yahweh sees them. And he said, these dry bones shall live again. So those who have been awakened at this point particular time now who are truly committed to the work of spreading preaching speaking the word or the good news or the gospel of Yahweh call it evangelism and the creating awareness of what his people should be doing and waking them up in their slumber that's those who are still sleeping in these last days. So these people are the people that he called the faithful servants. They are the people that are 
given the promise. They are the people that have the, the promise of Yahweh to be redeemed, to be saved, and to be taken back to the land. Now, let's take a notice of some scriptural evidences. We are going to look at so many of them. But the question is, why is Israelites in trouble up to today? Why are they in trouble up to today? Somebody will say, who are the Israelites? Where are they? Where, who, who are the people that you are really, really saying that they are in trouble? Do you know who they are? Do you know, how are you, you know, ascribing trouble to them and all that? Is it the trouble they're having? Is it what, does it align with what Yahweh is saying? Now, the Bible is clear. Bible tells us why Israelites is in trouble today, wherever they are. It is because they choose to forsake Yahweh and serve the Lord or the God of this world called Satan. Second Corinthians 4 verse 4 which the Gentile nations worship. Yahweh called their choice of disobedience a service to wood and stone. Yahweh abhorred their decision to worship wood and stone. Yahweh hates it. Yahweh doesn't want to see them do that. Because he didn't want them to perish, he had decreed this to his people in Ezekiel chapter 20, 30 to 32, which we just read a while ago. Reading that from New King James Version, verse 30. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says your Almighty, are you defiling yourselves in the manner of, of your fathers, committing halotry, idolatry, according to their abominations? For when you offer your gifts and make your sons, pass through the fire, no longer murder as in the days. That is, this passing through the fire, like I explained before, is no longer the kind of thing that obtained where they were murdering their children, killing their children by asking them to jump over the fire. And that child will fall inside as he tries to jump inside the fire. So that was what the fathers of old commissioned or committed their children to be doing. That was how they were sacrificing to the god Molech, the Baal Molech, which all were the handwriting and the call of Satan. It was a way for uh, he was receiving, you know, honor, worship from those deceived people. Now, how is this Molech or this Baal worshipped today in that sense, you know? with use of their children still, it is through baptism. You know, they, 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 they take their children, they say priests will pour their water or whoever is pastor will pour water upon the head of those children. Or even taking their children, even when they're adults, making them to baptize in the name of God, Lord Jesus and all that. Any name that is outside Yahweh, and they assure the, the savior of mankind in this world. Any name outside Yeshua that one baptizes into, that fellow is under the power and the authority of Satan. The person is still doing the fire kind of um, experience which the fathers committed their children to pass through. So the person is still defying themselves, the person is still, you know, provoking your way to anger by causing their children to pass through such a thing. So when they take them to priest, to pastor, to whoever that will baptize them at that infant level, or even as as adolescent, or even as an adult, it's supposed offering themselves into the fire of baptism. So that is what is still ongoing. I see what is still ongoing. Religions, different religions does their own in different ways. In Christianity, it is 
uh, baptism in different religions, they hold different ways of such rituals. So they take in Christianity, they take their people to Jesus, and in the name of Jesus, they do their baptism. In Islam, they take the, the failure to Allah, initiate the person to Allah. In, in Krishna or in Buddhism, in Hinduism, and so on, they take such a fellow to the leader of such faith, like Krishna, Buddha, and so on. Now, that is the individual, and that is, you know, subjecting that individual to the same kind of fire that the fathers were doing in the time of old. Now, the kind of baptism that Yahweh allows is the baptism that anyone should undertake in the name of Yahshua Messiah. The name of Yahshua. That is the only name appointed because Yahshua bears the name of the Father. And he is the one or the only one that Yahweh appointed or choose to you know, stand in for him so that people will come to him through Yahshua. Since Yahshua is the way, the truth, and the life, no one can come to Yahweh except through him. So anybody that baptizes outside the name of Yahshua is inviting trouble, is worshiping something else other than Yahweh. And the Yahweh says such people will perish who worship idols or images, figures, objects, such people are simply rebelling against him. So damnation is their portion. So he called it defilement. So such baptism we see in Deuteronomy chapter 32, 16 to 17, in the latter days, Israelites will undertake this kind of baptism to God and the new gods that come newly. That's what Deuteronomy 32, 16 to 17 says, because Israelites will be in the Gentile wars, and that's what, where they are today. So that is subjecting or submitting oneself to idols. And that is done or still being done till today. So that way he saying, so shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? That's after they submit themselves to baptize themselves to idol, to such God, bow, and all that. Then Yahweh says, As I live, says Yah Almighty, I will not be inquired of by you. Now, Yahweh no longer walk with his people, but withdraws and hide himself from them in their sufferings to see what their end will be. Now, when Yahweh was speaking through Ezekiel, as also he spoke through other prophets like Jeremiah, Isaiah, at a time, in fact, in the wilderness was when he made up his mind that when Israelites goes into idol worship, when they begin to, you know, remove themselves from him and entangle themselves with idol worship, said he will hide his face, he will withdraw from them, and they will go into suffering. He said he will watch them and see what their end will be. Deuteronomy 32, verse 20. Let's read that portion of the scripture. Deuteronomy 32, verse 20. And he said, that is Yahweh, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end will be. For they are a perverse generation, children in whom is no fate. Not only in that portion of the scriptures, um, if you flip back to Deuteronomy 31, 17 to 18, let's hear you again speak in the same manner. Uh, sorry, Deuteronomy 31, 17 to 18, yeah? He stated there, then my anger shall be aroused against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured, and many evils and troubles shall befall them, 
so that they will say in that day, have not these evils come upon, upon us because our father is not among us. Our yeah, our father is not among us. Verse 18, and I will surely hide my face in that day because of all the evil which they have done and that they have turned to gods. Are you hearing that? Mm. In these latter days, Israel will seek Yahweh, they will not find him. Not find him. It's already happening. People say, oh, they work miracle, they see they are Jesus, they, are, they see they are Lord, they are, it's not Yahweh, it's not Yahshua. It's the God, the same God that Yahweh is warning them. That's what, who they are seeing. So they see him in dream, they see him in vision, they see him in revelation, they see him in this and that. God, the Satan of this world, the God of this world, it's not Yahweh. Yahweh says he's going to, because Israel is still worshipping God. Israel is still worshipping idol. Israel is still worshipping wood and stone. Yahweh said, as they are into this, he will hide his face. He will withdraw from them. I guess we are understanding what Yahweh is telling us. When people say, ah, afterwards, when we call on him, uh, he answer us, miracles are done, uh, all manner of things, you know, Yahweh is not far away from us. It's not Yahweh, it's the God, it's the Lord that they are calling. There's a difference between Lord and God. I mean, the Lord, God, and Yahweh. There is mm. difference. Mm. There is difference between the two. Yahweh is the creator of God. God originally is the one, Satan, that failed from the category or from the level of angels. He was archangel. He was one of the chief angels, but he failed because angels are created as God. And human beings were created as God as well, but a little lower than the angels. So when Satan failed, he took that position as God and he made people, he made people to understand and to believe that God is the highest and the, 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 the only power, the only supreme being to be worshipped. So he, he removed the eyes of humanity from Yahweh and made everybody to submit or subject to him. And as a result, people think that God or what is called the Lord is the highest authority, the supreme being. That is not true. That is the lies of Satan. And that's why Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 says, Satan, the, the devil, deceived the whole world. That's where that statement or message is coming from. Deception of Satan, who you know thrived in deceiving the whole world, is by removing all human beings from the knowledge of the true creator, the one that is the creator of the heaven and the earth, the one that is the father of mankind. So Satan has assumed that position, has assumed that he, you know, convince people to believe that he is. The very one that that must be worshipped. That is not true. Let's look at Micah three verse four. Israel today are not that is Israel that's supposed to worship Yahweh are not worshiping. They are still worshiping wood and stone. As a result, Yahweh is not with them, and that's why they are into suffering. That's why they are into trouble. Wherever they are found, all over the world, make a trace of that yourself. It's assignment. Trace all of them that are into suffering wherever they are, that is what is going on with them today. But those, in a way, who have come to know him, return to him, he's liberating them, he's removing the veil upon them, and he is making life better for them. Though they are still in the Gentile world, but he is coming to remove them. They are the people he's promising to remove. Micah chapter 3 verse 4. Micah 3, verse 4, I read. Then they will cry to Yahweh, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, because they have been evil in their deeds. Are you hearing that? What is that evil? Worshipping of all this, you know, Baal, Balim, God, Lord, Jesus, of a thing that is 
within religion. That is what has happened to the people of Yahweh. Unfortunately, speak to them from morning to night. They don't want to know. They don't want to believe that they had fallen. They think they are still there. They have arrived. In fact, they're telling you that by grace they are going to heaven. Which heaven? You are, you are, you are disobeying Yahweh. You are disobeying your father, and you said you want to go and meet with him. You going, you are going to heaven to see him. I mean, the, the person will not even wake up when he uh, is trying to attempt that. He cannot even wake up because he cannot dare. Yahweh is holy. And you are coming to a disobedient person is going to him. Yahweh says even here on earth, he will remove his face if he hide himself that uh, he cannot tolerate their sin. Ezekiel 39, 23 to 24 Ezekiel 39, 23 to 24. Let's read that. Um, the Gentiles shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity, because they were unfaithful to me. Therefore, I hid my face from them. I gave them into the hand of their enemies, and they all fell by the sword. Israelites are going to fall by the sword. That is great tribulation. That is the rot, the anger, the punishment, the judgment that is coming. They are going to fall. According to their uncleanness and according to their transgressions, I have dealt with them and hidden my face from them. Are we reading that or is it just me only reading that? So Yahweh says it's, going to, it's not going to let go. They are going to pay the price of their arrogance, the price of their foolishness, pride of their disobedience. Verse 29, the same Ezekiel 39, verse 29. And I will not, I will not hide my face from them anymore. That is after they have repented. Those that will repent, he will not hide his face anymore. For I will have, I will have poured out my spirit on the house of Israel, says Yahweh Almighty. Now, in this letter days, after Yahweh would have dealt with Israelites that are disobedient, he will rescue those who are obedient and he will watch over them. His spirit will avail to them. His spirit will enable them even to return back to the land. They will now know the truth. They will now know what Yahweh is telling them to know, that obedience. They turn back to covenant law, covenant commandment. They will return back to it and be able to respect, honor their father who created them. They will recognize him, you know, because as at now, the recognition of Yahweh is uh, terrible, not just pretty difficult, it's terrible. They don't want to know. So as a result of their disobedience, Yahweh continue to hide his face, hide himself, you know, um, will not listen even to their call or their prayer. Um, Isaiah 8, verse 17, and I will wait on Yahweh, who hides his face from the house of Jacob, Israel, and I will hope in him. Um, here am I and the children whom Yahweh has given me. We are for signs and wonders in Israel from, the, from Yahweh of hosts who dwell in Mount Zion. So those who are today repenting, they must wait for Yahweh. Because you know he is the, the right and the, and they will have the signs that yes, they have returned to him. He will give them signs, he will show to them that yes, he is Yahweh. But for Yahweh acting actively like he was, he acted in Egypt through the wilderness and even in the land of Israel, you know, do you know those, uh, no, 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 no. He's going to do that quite all right. By the time he'll be removing Israelites, the true ones, Yahweh will, his spirit will be alive everywhere in them. And they will be so great, so powerful, so mighty. The Bible said Israelites will be, one person will be, one man will be like 100 persons or 100 men in terms of strength, in terms of Yahweh will pour his grace, will pour his anointing, will pour his power upon his people and he will move them. So as at now, no, 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 that power is not for them at the moment. Yahweh is still withdrawing and holding himself because of how they strayed, because of how they walked away. Then is he 
overlooking or uh, leaving them in their troubles. No, it's not leaving them. He watches over them. He cares for them. And he wouldn't want them to perish, particularly those that are repenting now. Because the greater, the majority of them are also going to repent as well. Remember Ezekiel 37. The, those in the dry bone, I mean, the dry bones that are littered in the valleys, they are going to wake up. He said they are going to stand up as a mighty army. And these are the ones that he will take back to the land. So the power of Yahweh is yet to be revealed in that sense. His power is coming. So continue to wait on him. You see, the scripture, as I said, the righteous will continue to wait. He will not say no. He will not go back to the vomit. He will not go back to the idol he is worshipping. Rather, you wait for Yahweh. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. Isaiah 30, 20, I read. And though Yahweh gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore, but your eyes shall see your teachers. Verse 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you, saying, this is the way. Walk in it wherever you turn to the right, to the right hand, or whenever you turn to the left. Now, this is what is happening now because Yahweh is beginning, you know, he's, he's beginning to turn to his people. Yes, he's beginning to look into, and that he said he is going to reveal his name. I think that is where he's starting. Particularly as he's calling them back to Sabbath. Sabbath. If you watch all over the world now, people are recognizing returning to Sabbath. Sabbath. So as they are doing that, what are they going to do in the day of Sabbath? Worship. Who are they going to worship? So he said he's going to reveal his name. After he revealed his Sabbath, he's going to reveal his name. Isaiah 52 verse 6 said, New Living Translation says he's going to reveal his name to his people. So he's now revealing his name, Yahweh, the, 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 the four Hebrew consonants called tetragrammaton, tetragrammaton, Y-H-W-H, Y-H-W-H, that is the name of Yahweh in Hebrew, the original name of Yahweh, and it's pronounced as Yahweh. Some call him Yahuwah, Yahuwah. Some call him Yahweh, whichever, because we don't have, you know, uh, the, the obvious facts concerning the pronunciation, but all we know is that the name is that Y W H Y H W H, which is constant, which is original name. So hold dear to that. So how you pronounce it now, Yahweh will help you. The Holy Spirit will guide you. But we in assembly of the living Yahweh, we are you know um, spelling up, sorry, pronouncing that. Uh, tatagrammaton, the YHWH, as Yahweh. They call him Yahuwah. I don't think Yahweh will be angry with you at that, but we must get it right. Along the way, it must be right. But for us, as it has been shown to us today, we are holding y, YHWH, Yahweh, as our father's name. That is all the way 2,600, it was revealed, it was revealed, the fathers of old, the Israelites of old, before even Yahshua came, that was revealed, you know, and in so many places, you know, there is proof, there are archaeological proofs, and there are, you know, writings of the old that has been excavated, that showcase that his name is Y-H-W-H, Yahweh. Now, that is the name. Now, as he is or has revealed his name in this recent time, people are who are wise, they are going to stay with his name. They are going to be doing his Sabbath worship. Because that is what the fathers were not doing. That was what created the trouble. Once you are into Sabbath worship, and you know his name, and you keep to observing his commandments, like keeping the feasts, Yahweh will not abandon you. Yahweh will not leave you or forsake you. Even when you are sick, Yahweh will answer you. Yahweh will heal you. Yahweh will intervene for your situation, your case. 
uh, two days ago or three days ago, my eyes, this my left eyes was almost closing. All of a sudden, Satan is a terrible trick and a, a fighter. Now I lay hands by it. I wanted to go and apply an oil. I said, ah, the word of you is enough. And uh, what I did was to put hand close to my eyes and uh, I call on the name of Yahweh, call on the name of Yahweh, call on the name of Yahweh. I say, Jesus, I mean, Yahshua, take over. Since I'm serving you now, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer in the Gentile world where I'm serving the yes. Gentile name of Jesus and all that. Yahweh, you are my father. Yahshua, you are my owner. Take over. Heal, my, I say, heal, heal. Do you know Exodus chapter 15? Think verse 26. He, Yahweh is clear. He said, Israel, when you come out of the, the, the land of Gentiles, the land of Egypt, once you maintain keeping my covenant commandments, I will take away the diseases of Egypt from you. I have always held that to my head and to my heart. And he said in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15, Israel, if you continue to maintain what I told you and continue to hold, I think Moses was repeating what he said in Exodus chapter 15. Now, Yahweh says he is going to be my healer because those sicknesses, those diseases are not for me. Now, David was clear when he said in Psalm 103 that Yahweh is our healer. And I held to all that. So the point I'm making here is that at the name of Yahshua, every knee must bow, including sicknesses, including diseases, including lack of want, they will bow. So we are in the we have entered in the era he called Israelites to bow to him and worship him, calling him on the name of Yahshua Messiah. Yahshua is his son. Yahshua is the one he sent. He is the only Messiah, the only savior of mankind. It's not Jesus. Jesus, we call Jesus in those days, Jesus of Christianity. It's not Jesus that saves. Jesus is a religious name that they use to replace Yahshua from the Book of Covenant. But they think they will succeed because Israelites, were, that's what they were pursuing. It's still anchored on Baal, Lord, God, worship. In these latter days, that name will metamorphose into a new name. Let's read it where Yahshua said that. Uh, Yahweh said that through Moses in the, in the wilderness. Let's read it from verse 15. But Yeshurun, that is Israel, grew fat and kicked. That's when Yahweh was blessing them. <laughs> they were so fat. They were so, that is, they were prosperous. Things was going on well. Yahweh was blessing them. Then they forget Yahweh. Listen very well. You grew fat. You grew thick. You are obeyed. Then he forsook Yahweh. That is Israel forsook Yahweh. Who made him? And scornfully esteemed the rock of his salvation. Verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with foreign what? Foreign gods, which is all this Baal, Lord, God, which they are worshiping today. Now, with abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons, not to Yahweh. Verse 17. They sacrificed to demons. So all that they are doing, in all their worship and all that, they are giving up the offering, their tithes. Since they are not worshipping Yahweh, they are worshipping Satan. Whatever offering, whatever thanksgiving, whatever they are doing is to all these demons that receive glory, you know, that Satan take glory through the demons and so on. That is what is going on. Now he continues, he says, with abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons, not to Yahweh. To gods they did not know. To new gods, new arrivals that your fathers did not fear. Did you hear that? Yeah. What is that new gods? Look at all, the, all you see as religions of the world today. It's 
Then we was looking at this later days, particularly the religions that will bring in new names, new idols, new whatever that people are going to worship. All religions of the world, including the Jesus of today, that is the new God of, of Christianity. So that is what is being referred to there. I, I think you hold all these biblical, you know, um, tests so closely to your chest so that you search them out, read them, and the spirit of Yahweh will tell you the truth behind what Yahweh is saying. We want to take more about Yahweh hiding his face, hiding himself from his people. And even as he is going to reveal himself again in this letter days, um, let's look at Isaiah 45. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, they are out to tell us what is happening and what is even happening in this letter days. Isaiah 40, 45, we look at 15, verse 15 there. Truly, you are Yahweh, who hide yourself, O Yah of Israel, the Savior. Did you hear that? He does not tolerate iniquity. Once you sin, and he says, stop sinning, stop sinning, you continue, he will hide, he will remove himself. That is that hide, not that he will, I mean, the earth is his own, the heaven is his own, so, but he will remove the, himself from the person, so the person will fall down to the idol he's worshipping, to the God of this world, Satan that is worshipping. Let's look at Isaiah 54 verse 8. Isaiah 54 verse 8. Let's take it from verse 7. Isaiah 54 from verse 7. For a mere moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. Did you hear that? Yahweh will return back to us again. And that's what he's talking about, about in this letter. This, as we talk about or speak about this uh, Feast of Tabernacle, we are looking at how Yahweh is going to come back to us in this letter days, and he will restore his own people and the Gentile nations that will be grafted to him, he will restore them and take them back to himself. So that is what he's speaking. It is the language he's speaking there. That at some moment, yeah, he, he, he yeah, will forsake his people, but he's going to come back to them. But with great masses, I will gather you. Verse 8, but a little rot I hid. With a little rot, I hid my face from you for a moment. But with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you, says Yahweh, your Redeemer, your Savior. So he's coming back to Israel. That's the point I was making earlier. He's coming back to rescue his people. He's been hiding himself for decades, for centuries for years, for thousands of years now, he's coming back. And when he will come back, would you be ready? Because he is making himself available, he's revealing himself through his appointed Sabbath day of worship, through his feasts. He has, you know, expanded and made his name known. Are you ready to embrace him? Are you ready to receive him? Are you ready to return to him? When he will come, to move them away. He said he's going to come in that, that occasion. He's going to come with anger. And only those, only those that are ready will be saved. He'll move them. He'll move them out. And those that are not ready, his anger, his wrath, we wipe them away. We sweep them away. Now, verse 17 to 18. I read Isaiah 57, 17 to 18. For the iniquity of his covetousness, I was angry and struck him. I hid and was angry. And he went on backsliding in the way of his heart. He's talking to his people. I have seen his ways. He's here, he's talking about Israel, his people. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will also lead him and restore comfort to him and to his mourners. Yes, 
his mourners, those the Gentiles that have soft spot for Israel, those that are saying sorry to him, even as Yahweh is dealing with his people. And you know, those who are having soft spot for Israel, the mourners, one way or the other, they will change their mind and turn to the Yahweh of Israel, and they will be saved. These are the Gentiles that will be grafted in. Now, Isaiah 50, 50, uh, 59, let's look at Isaiah 59, verse 2. But your iniquities have separated you from your father, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. So prayers that are not heard, check it out. There is something that Yahweh says you should not be doing. You may have embraced worship of Baal, worship of money, worship of wealth, worship, worship of material things, and you are forsaken Yahweh. You are forsaken the day of meeting, the day of his appointment, Shabbat, the feast days. If you are doing that, surely Yahweh will be angry with you. Yahweh will withdraw. Surely, that is as sure as the sun comes out in the day. Now, Isaiah 64, verse 7. And there is no one who calls on your name, on the name of Yahweh. You see? About, about say, 10 years ago, the only insignificant number of people were calling the name of Yahweh. 15 years, 20 years, I was not hearing the name of Yahweh. I didn't know what is Yahweh. Me speaking, I didn't know. And many people, but since past 10 years now, it's catching like a wildfire. People are embracing his name. People are returning to Sabbath worship. People are turning to day of feast of Yahweh as recorded in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 stated eight, eight different days or appointed time. The, 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 the Sabbath, Sabbath day is made it eight in number. The annual feast are seven. Sabbath is a weekly Sabbath. It's also appointed day. So all these feast days, we have to return to them and all those that have that are wise now and keeping tab with this instruction that Yahweh issued or is using to call his people to himself. Anybody that embraces this call now, surely he will surely save the people because <laughs> this age is closing up. No more. Man's days on earth is numbered. Not that the earth will be wiped out, but he's coming to judge the earth, coming to judge mankind, coming to judge Israel in particular, whom he gave this covenant, because everything is all about Israel. Coming to judge them, and he's coming to restore them back to their land. Then the Gentiles themselves, who now believe, will follow, will be rescued as well. Then the, both the rebelling Israelites and the Gentiles, who are wicked, all of them will be dealt with. He will, he will judge them. Let's look at Sam, David, David wrote. Let's look at Sam, chapter 7, verse 10. Chapter, chapter, no, no, chapter 10, we we'll look at chapter 10, verse 11. But I want to take it from verse, verse 10. Um, that is Psalm chapter 10. Psalm 10, let me get it right. Psalm chapter 10. Yeah. From verse. From verse. Okay, let's make it 11. Chapter 10, from verse 10. From verse 11. He has said in his heart, Yahweh has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see. Now, verse 2 says, Arise, O Yahweh, O our Yah. 
Lift up your hand. Do not forget the humble. He will not forget. He will not forget the humble. Humble yourself. Return back to Yahweh. Stop your pride and your arrogance and every stupidity that is, you know, stopping every one of us from knowing him, from returning to him. Let's abandon and throw them away. And Yahweh will return back to us because he will not. He's a lovely and wonderful father. Psalm 22, verse 24. 22 verse 24, I have to be a little bit uh, faster now. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, nor has he hidden his face from him. But when he cried to him, he heard. Brethren, as Yahweh is now coming back, returning to Israel, I mean, just surrender to him. When you are praying, that is faith you will hear your father truly, instead of uh, mingling and dancing and uh, doing all this acrobatic with the enemy, with Satan. Return to Yahweh. Psalm 37 verse 9. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me. Oh, my Yahweh of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then Yahweh will take care of me. Yes, time is coming when the world, not only father and mother, when the world will forsake you, when you will have nobody to, to hold to or to run to, but only Yahweh himself, who will save you if Yahweh is not helping you or not there to answer you. Because all those that hate him, look at Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. It says, only one that does not keep his covenant, his commandments, hates him. And he said, he will not only hate the people, he will, he, will, he will judge them, first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth generation. So anybody that does not recognize him, does not now return back to him and fellowship and worship him the way he commits us to worship him, the person will be in trouble. When the, when the heat, you know, that is about to fall upon the earth will be so much, where will the person go? Uh, Psalm chapter 30, verse 7. Yahweh, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. You hid your face, and I was troubled. I cried out to you, O Yahweh, and to Yahweh I made supplication. Now, when we commit sin, Yahweh, certainly Yahweh will hid his face. But when we return to him, and call on him, make our supplication to him. He hears us, he answers us. Let's quickly look at so many, so many. I want you to check out Psalm 69, verse 17 on your own. Then Psalm 102, verse 2, Psalm 143, verse 7, Psalm 55, verse 1, Psalm 51, verse 9, Psalm 89, verse 6, Job, Job 13. Verse 24, Hosea 6, Hosea 5, sorry, Hosea 5, verse 6, and Genesis 4, verse 14. Now, let me continue reading what I was sharing with you in Ezekiel 20, 30 to 32. I read verse 32. What you have in your mind shall never be. When you say, we will be like the Gentiles, like the families in other countries, serving wood and stone. You see, this is, has been the determination of Israel to worship the Baal, even the Baal, or the God that come newly, the Jesus that come newly. Where was Jesus? Emperor Constantine, 325 AD. All the bishops of Rome together, and they, assign them to appoint to themselves the Messiah. The Messiah. Ezekiel, sorry, what I mentioned was Ezekiel 20, yeah? Ezekiel 20, 30 to 32. Um, the Constantine asked them to appoint who will be their Messiah, who will be their, their 
who they will have their faith. You know, I, I, that was their spiritual um, one or God who they will worship. And they, they gathered so many idols, so many gods of the world. And at the end of the day, they arrived at Jesus Christ. This is historical. This is, do your research. So from issues to issues to Jesus, Jesus was 17th century, they found the Tiger in uh, English uh, uh, ways. And ever since, the Jesus in, in uh, Jews, Jews, Jews in Latin became Jesus when the Tiger, that eye was removed and the J was inserted and it became Jesus. So ever since, since 17th century. So it's, this new God is of recent. Going by what uh, Yahweh said in Deuteronomy chapter 32, 16 and 17, that they worship new God, even God that come newly. That's what is happening. And here we see, we read in Ezekiel, where they, they said they made an agreement with that new God. Even the old God they have been worshiping. So what you have in your mind shall never be when you say we will be like the gods or the, the Gentiles, like the families in other countries serving wood and stone. That's what they determined to do. They determined to serve, to continue to worship Baal, the God, the Lord, wood and stone. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 28, Yahweh also mentioned that what they are serving, the God they are serving is wood and stone. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 28. Now, what is this people saying out here? The people of Yahweh vowed to be like the Gentile nations in the following ways. You know, let's do a recap there. One, they want to continue to serve and worship gods. That is Satan who is depicted by Yahweh as wood and stone. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 16 to 17. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 28. Then 2 Corinthians 4, verse 4 says that the, the God they serve is Satan. Their God is Satan. Now, two, they want to continue to elect their rulers or kings by themselves. And that was in their own time, their own democracy. Today is the world democracy. They join the world with their democracy because they say they want to be like the Gentiles. They want to do what the Gentiles are doing. So the democracy of the world is still ongoing till today. First Samuel chapter 8. That's where Israelites rebelled. We want to be like the Gentiles. We want to appoint our own kings. Now number three, Israel vows to worship queen of heaven and to give offering to her continuously. Jeremiah chapter 44, verse 25, check it out. In fact, if you read the whole of that Jeremiah 44, you will see how these people, we are going back and forth. At the end of the day, they said to Jeremiah, we will not serve Yahweh again. We will continue with worshiping Satan, Baal. Now, number four, Israel had his own Yahweh, at the end they his own Yahweh and denounced obedience to his laws. Jeremiah chapter 2 and Jeremiah chapter 30, 1 to 38, or 1 to the end, wherever it is. And uh, in fact, from Jeremiah chapter 38 to 30, Jeremiah chapter 30, from number 1 to Jeremiah chapter 30 to 22. When you read it, you see that Yahweh was like, my people, what are you doing to yourself? And they made up their mind to go their way. Particularly in Jeremiah chapter 2. They would say, what offense did I commit against you? That you have left me and you seek all these things you are worshipping. Now, would Yahweh continue to be angry with his people? No, no, he said, no, no, no. He will not continue to look onto their foolishness or stupidity. He will return to them. Yahweh, in his infinite mercy, disagreed with them and decreed, because these people decreed that they are going to worship 
idle continuously. They are going to continue to follow their, you know, the world way of electing their leaders. They continue to rebel against the law of Yahweh and so on. Then we said, no, that's your decree, that's your determination, that's your agreement with the Gentile, you know, way of life. The agreement with Satan and the agreement with death will not work. I'm going to come and rescue you. I'm going to deliver you. Now, listen to what Yahweh says in the same Ezekiel where we read. I want to repeat it for emphasis. What you have in your mind shall never be when you say we will be like the Gentiles, like the families in other countries, serving wood and stone. Now, however, after Israel are punished for their disobedience, because they are always still going to punish them for all that they have been doing, all, you know, abandoning him, forsaking him, they are still going to, you know, give them punishment due to them. Every sin has equal punishment or equal uh, uh, reward according to the measure of what the person has impeded against himself. So, after Israelites are punished for their disobedience in these later days, Yahweh would restore them and take them back to their land. This is the reason for the huge promises for their escape from the Gentile nations, and he will restore them back into that land he scattered them, he sacked them from. Yahweh's promise, Yahweh, Yahweh's promise to his people to escape and to restore them to their land is coming into these later days when judgment will envelop the earth, when Yahweh will judge this world with great tribulation and his wrath. His wrath will be so much, his anger will be so much that the wicked will be dealt with. Not all will return, though not all Israelites will return. Only the obedient and faithful Israel and the Gentile believers will be restored back to the land of promise. Isaiah 56, 1 to 8. Isaiah 56, 1 to 8. Now let us sample some biblical information that you know encourages us at this time, you know, to, to, to believe the word of Yahweh because our authority is the word of Yahweh. The faith we have is what Yahweh has said, what Yahweh has spoken, and what he's carrying out. They are all in the scripture. So let us even go to the New Testament to showcase that what we have been talking about by the prophets in the Torah, that is Old Covenant, that all of them are also in the New Testament. Revelation chapter 14, verse 12, reading from New, uh, New King James tra uh, translation, or New King James version, now, it's talking about those who Yahweh will save. Who are those that will be saved? Who are those that he will rescue? Who are those that he has given this promise? Promise to restore them, to save them, and to take them back to the land. Who are they? Now, Revelation 14, verse 12 says, Here is the patience of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of Yahweh and the faith of Yahshua. That is to say, those who has given themselves to obedience, to obey the law, to obey the commandments of Yahweh, and that have faith in Yahshua. Yahshua is our Messiah. Yahshua is our mediator. Yahshua is one that is coming to do what? To rescue Israel and the Gentile world, or Gentile people that believe. So anybody that baptized in the name of Yahshua will be saved. So that is number one from Revelation 14 verse 12. Now, Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 to 15, Yahweh made us to understand. Say, blessed are those who do his commandments, his commandments on the line, that they may have the right to the tree of life. Yahweh is talking about salvation. Yahweh is talking about eternal life. And may enter through the gates into the city. Yes, he will lead them as he led them in the first exodus. So he's talking about the second exodus. This second exodus, which is yet, which is coming, he will take them to the wilderness, and at the end of the day, by the time he had purged them, he will lead them down into the land 
To that land they rejected. To that land he scattered them. He will lead them back to that land. But outside are dogs. Those, those who will not enter it are dogs. He called them dogs. They are wicked. They are rebellious. They are those that are not obeying the commandments. And they are, they are those that do not have anything to do with Yeshua Messiah. He called them dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters. And whoever loves and practices a lie, I, Yeshua, this is our Messiah, our master that is coming back, our rock, the redeemer that is coming back to do the deliverance. I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the assemblies. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Note, the wicked dogs, the wicked called dogs, sorcerers, sexually moral, murderers, idolaters, liars, covetous, thieves, evil workers, all disobedient will not enter the land. Those who insist in the call of God, Lord, or Jesus are classified as rebels, according to Ezekiel chapter 20 and Hosea chapter 2. They will be cut off. Now let us look at Hosea chapter 2. Because it's there that this message is quite captured about the name they are calling now. We say chapter 2, 16 to 17. And it shall be in that day, says Yahweh, that you will call me my husband. Mark that. Underline it. My husband. That is what the sense we call him. What is the meaning of husband? We are going to find out. That is Ish. That is father. Now, no longer call me my master. Yahweh don't want us to call him that thing called master. Master has the meaning, the root name of Hebrew, Baal. Don't call me Baal again. Or Lord. The English interpretation of Baal is Lord, the Lord, which is all over the Bible. They, they, tweaked, they, tweaked, they, they removed the name of Yahweh and inserted the Lord, that is Baal, or God. For I will take from her mouth, that is mouth of the rebel or the disobedient, the names of the Baals, the Lord, and they shall be remembered by their name no more. They shall not call the names of these Baals no more. The Lord, the God, and all what not they are calling the Jesus will never be in their tongue anymore. Now, I made an inquiry to, you know, fact check this particular, you, you cannot fact check by, uh, the, the Bible or the word of Yahweh, it is true and true, but further effort to convince those who are too scholar, scholarly in whatever they want to do, do academias. Now, husband means ish or ish. I Y S H, Ish, that is Hebrew, or Father. In Strong's Hebrew Dictionary, number 30, uh, 376, um, Ish equal to husband, man. That is, it means good, great, mighty. Now, he said, is the one that is high, high degree, that is husband. Now, only Yahweh has this attribute of husband. And Yeshua told us in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, that that husband is good. Only father is good. No one on earth is good. Say, so don't call me good. No one is good but the father. So only the father is good. That is the attribute of husband. And the 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 Root interpretation, the real meaning is father. And Yeshua made it clear in Matthew chapter 19, verse, sorry, that is Matthew 23, verse 9. It is Matthew 19, 16. He was telling us that no one is good but the father. Now, in Matthew 23, verse 9, he told us that our father is the one in heaven, the creator of heaven and earth. He is the father. No one on earth is our father, but one in heaven. So he is our father, Yahshua. I mean, Yahweh himself. Now, what about master? What is the meaning of master? Now, we go to um, 
the Strong Hebrew Dictionary again, and we discovered in that Strong Hebrew Dictionary number 1180, uh, uh, 1180, says it's Bali, from, it's taken from the root word Baal, which is also in number 1167. It is depicted as Bali, my master. It symbolized a name for Jehovah, which is Baal. See, even when they call Jehovah, it is still Baal. That's what Hebrew, uh, Strong's Hebrew Dictionary is saying. So whether you call him Jehovah, you call him Baal, you call him the Lord, you call him God, you are, or you call him Master, you are referring to the enemy of our souls, Satan. So he said, in that wilderness, you will no longer call me a master. You no longer call me a Baal. You no longer call me the Lord or God. That is what Yahweh said in Hosea. Hosea chapter 2, 16 and 17. Now, Ezekiel 20, 33 to 40. Read it yourself. But just to say or repeat it that Yahweh says he's to bring Israelites out from that uh, the gentle world where they are residing now, with fury poured out, and he will rule them with kind of rod of iron. He's going to rule them or lead them out with rod. That is going to is going to be by power. It's going to be by his strength, and it's going to be by shaking them. And not all will make it. Say, so I will make you pass under the rod and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. So the covenant they are not following today. The law they are rejecting that they said is nailed to the tree. That law is what he will bring them into. If they must be saved, anybody that will be saved, anybody that, and that the, the way is return back to Shabbat, return back to the name of Yahweh, return back to, you know, the feast of Yahweh, return back to the Torah, they turn back to the commandments of Yahweh. They turn back to obeying the law, the commandment, the word that Yahweh has spoken. The direction, his instruction. They turn back to his instruction. That is all he's telling us. Obedience. Not the other way around. Satan said, no, 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 don't return to his covenant law. Don't return to his word again. It's now it's, it's dumped to the, to the trees. Who dumped it? And at the end of the day, they will perish. Anybody that continue to do that, they will perish. Now, verse 37 says, I will make you pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. That's it. I will purge the rebels from among you. Remember who said, said talked about that rebel, those that still maintain uh, the name of Baal, the Lord, and all that. He will deal with them. He will purge them. He will wipe them out of the surface of the earth. That is Yahweh's instruction. So all those that are still in disobedience, going after the name of idols, in the name of Lord God, Jesus, and so on and so forth, and all the modern religious messianic names that are current today, they are really, really in trouble. Yahweh said he's not going to spare them. According to Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hosea, and other prophets, those Israelites who insist to serve, worship, and call upon the name of Baal, of or the Lord, God, and whatever name they can find, instead of worshiping Yahweh, he said, those will be destroyed. They will perish in the wilderness. They will not make it to the land. Israel restoration promises and instructions continues. Let's quickly listen to Yahweh in some Bible passages. Revelation chapter 3, verse 10. Because you have kept the word of my patience, that is covenant commandments, I will also keep you from the hour of temptations. Yes, great revelation is coming. The troubles of the world is coming. The wrath of Yahweh is coming. Now he said he will keep those people who are keeping the word of his patience. That is the, his commandments, which will, now when the trouble, the temptation that will try the world, that will hit the world comes, so he will come and do what? Protect them. This is why we are celebrating this feast. 
Yahweh yeah, is talking about protection. Yahweh yeah, is talking about tabernacling his people. Yahweh yeah, is talking about sheltering his people. Say, I also will keep you from the hour of temptation, which will come upon all the world to test those who dwell upon the earth. Exodus 16, verse 4. When Israelites we are coming back the first time from Egypt, because Yahweh will always give you what happened in the past, so that you understand what he's talking about. Exodus 16, verse 4. Then Yahweh said to Moshe, Moses, I will rain bread from heaven for you. So are you going to be worried about what you're going to eat? Have faith in Yahweh. Have trust in Yahweh. Don't worry about food. All you need to do is, how do I obey Yahweh? How do I keep his commandments? How do I continue to fellowship in his name? That is what is important. Forget about what you're going to eat or go. Now that you are still in the Gentile world and all that, yes, walk and all that, fail for your living. But when the chips are down, when the, everywhere will be locked, when there will be no airplane flying, when there will be no where you go, when there will be no work for you to do, how will you eat? Yahweh will find you out and Yahweh will solve your problem. The people are to go out and gather enough for each day in order that I may test them to see whether they will walk in my law or not. So there will be, there will be saying, Watch what happened to the people of old. When they were returning, I gave them food. But in giving them food, I was testing them at the same time. How? Remember that he told them on this on the Friday, go and collect two portions of your food, one for the Friday and one for the Saturday, which is Sabbath. On the Sabbath, they don't come out. That is a resting day. That is a day when you will say, rest, rest, stop giving yourself a headache. What is the hula bula working on that day? Why are you going to trouble yourself? You always say rest. Simple, simple, simple. Let rest. But these people will not rest. On that Sabbath day, they went out and the Bible said when they got into the field, they couldn't find anything. And here we called Moses and said, look at this people. They will not serve me. They are stiff naked. They are, they are hardened. Exodus 16 verse 4. Now let's read Exodus 20 verse 20. Moses said to the people, do not fear, for Yahweh has come to test and prove you so that the reverence for Yahweh will be with you so that you do not commit sin. What is he saying? When Yahweh says stand, stand. When he says sit down, sit down. Because he's testing you. He's testing you. In our world today, they said, oh, all, all this year, reading this Old Testament. But then what we've been reading is Old Testament and New Testament. And the Old Testament said, in the later days, all that Yahweh is saying is going to happen. And it's collaborated with the New Testament messages that is going to happen. When Yahweh says, don't sin against him. Don't hurt yourself by sinning against him. Listen to him, or else trouble is on the horizon. Let's, give, let's listen to Yahweh's hint here. During this restoration of Israelites, I mean, during the restoration of Yahweh's people along the wilderness movement, there will be tests and trials as Israel experienced when they were returning from Egypt. The scriptures reveal there will be weepings and sorrows at that time because of ugly experiences encountered in the Great Tribulation. One will one needs to remain thankful and faithful to the Father and the Messiah, Yeshua. The test will reveal if one is faithful and obedient and will continue to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. That is the kind of test that is going to be given. Yahweh is setting example and giving you answers in advance. Why not pay attention? The issue is ears. The ears is not taken in. And the heart is not you know, making sure that obedience occurs. That is the problem of man. Those who would pass the wilderness test are classified as the called, the chosen, and faithful. Revelation chapter 17, verse 14. That's what they are called. And they are those that will be permitted to enter the kingdom of Yahweh. Remember Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. So because they keep the commandments of Yahweh and the gate will be open for them. They will pass through, they will enter through the gate into the city. 
and where they will eat the beauties of the land. All the bells or all rebels or unfaithful will be destroyed. They will not enter the land. Ezekiel 20, 33 to 40. Hosea 2, 16 to 17. Isaiah 26. Come, my people, enter your chambers. This is the time when trouble, when the trouble starts, Yahweh is the one that is going to do the covering, the protection. If you say move, you move. If you say wherever. And that's why you need to be with the assembly that Yahweh is speaking with. Yahweh is carrying. Yahweh is, is working with. Because there his spirit will be speaking to his people. Come, my people, enter your chambers, tabernacles, boot, shelter. That is what you are celebrating today. Remember, this is Feast of Tabernacles. Yahweh is using it to teach us what is coming tomorrow, what is coming in the future. And shut your doors behind you. Exodus, remember Exodus chapter 12, 22 to 23. It happened then, it will happen again. He is telling us what is going to happen as we move into the future. This is Isaiah 26. Now, carry on. He said, hide yourself as it were for a little moment because the great tribulation will be a little moment. Yes, it may be one year, it may be two years, but the Bible says three and a half years it will take. For a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, Yahweh comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood as in Egypt and will no more cover her slain. After that, this wicked world and this, those that have been doing, committing all manner of atrocities against the children of Yahweh will stop. And that's why Yahweh will judge the Gentiles, otherwise Gentiles will not be affected. The trouble, great tribulation, is going to hit Israel hard. But why, how will it affect the Gentile? Because they have, you know, followed suit in committing the type of sin Israel is committing and even persecuting and afflicting Israel. Who is in their land? Yahweh says, if anyone is in your land as a, a, a sojourner, keep him as your own. Don't chastise him. Don't, you know, treat him like a slave. Keep him. He said to Israel, because you were once a, 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 a bond person in the foreign land. So if anybody, wherever anybody is, and is treating, my treating a foreigner, anyhow, Yahweh is taking note. And when the time of judgment comes, Yahweh will deal with the person or the nation seriously. Contrary to what, sorry, contrary to what worldly preachers may tell us today, it is obedience, the obedient people, that Yahweh will tolerate. It is obedience to Yahweh's laws that keeps us in contact with Yahweh. And it is the breaking of Yahweh's laws that cuts off people from him. People are cut off because of disobedience to his law. This is clearly written for our instruction. Let's take one more or few of the Bible, uh, this will be ready to conclude the meeting. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2 says, Behold, Yahweh's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your own iniquities have separated you from your father, and your own sins have caused him to hide his face from you. So he will not listen. The apostle John said the same thing, only in a different way. Let us listen to John. People think this thing is just Old Testament, Old Testament. The Old Testament and New Testament are saying the same thing. First John chapter 3, verse 22. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his laws. Are you hearing that? We keep his laws and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Therefore, it is a scriptural fact that we remain in contact with Yahweh by obeying him. 1 John chapter 3, 7 to 8, we read, Little children, let no man deceive you. Yes, deceptions are everywhere. Religious people, they will tell you, do not listen to them about Yahweh's law. The covenant law has been nailed to the trees. 
don't ever listen. This is New Testament. Little children, let no one or man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who commits sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. What is committing sin here? Sin is breaking the law. Sin is transgression of the law. That is what sin is. That is the biblical definition of sin. First John chapter 3, verse 4. That is what the definition of sin is transgression of Yahweh's law. If you break it, you are committing sin. First John chapter 2, verse 4. Because people say, we know him, we know him. We have fellowship with him. We love him. Listen to First John 2, verse 4. He who says, I know him, but does not keep his law, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Did you hear that? The religious leaders of today's world rebel against Yahweh's laws. They preach that his laws were nailed to the tree or done away with by the Messiah. Who said? This is religion. This is the voice of Satan telling the world, don't pay attention to Yahweh. Don't listen to his commandment. Don't listen to his instructions. Then Yahshua said in, his, in the word of the Father, Yahshua said, John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. The commandments is the law, is the commandments of the Father, is the word of the Father. That's what he said in John chapter 14, verse 21, 23, and 24. That that word he's speaking, that commandment, is the commandments of the Father. So he said, if you love me, keep my commandments, the commandments of the Father. John 15, verse 10. If you keep my commandments... You will abide in my love. Because the commandment is love. The Ten Commandment is love. Just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. I pray that the grace of Yahweh, the mercy of Yahweh, as you listen and believe the word of Yahweh as written in his covenant book, as you obey him, the goodness and mercy of Yahweh will follow you. The grace of Yahweh will envelop you to cover you. Continue to keep the word of Yahweh and to continue to help you to live by instructions even to the end. And when the trouble will ensue, wherever, whenever, Yahweh will be your tabernacle. Yahweh will be your shelter. Yahweh will be your covering. Yahweh will be your teacher. Yahweh will be your instructor. Yahweh will guide you and guide you to the end. And he will take you to the land. That is your portion. That is my portion. That is the blessings of Yahweh upon us. May Yahweh bless you. May Yahweh keep you. May Yahweh help us all to overcome in these last days in Yeshua's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.